Hello, it's me Joe again, and today I'm going to talk about upstrokes and downstrokes. Dynamics is one of the most important parts of playing your instrument well. Dynamics, in case you don't know, means how loudly or softly you're making the sound on your instrument. And if you don't have control over the dynamics, you can't really create the light and shade, the push and pull and the, the excitement of uh, music that you want to create when you're playing your instrument, whether it's drums or any other instrument. So dynamics is a very important subject. There are four strokes that we can learn that will help us develop our dynamic control over the drums. Um, and these strokes allow you to transition from loud to soft and from soft to loud again. I've already shown you two of those strokes. Uh, when I made my introductory video, I explained how to play rebound strokes, which are also known as full strokes. That means we're playing a large bouncy stroke like this, describing a 90 degree arc, give or take. Okay, and that's about as loud as you want to hit your drum or cymbal. And we learn how to play these movements in big exaggerated motions at first, and then they kind of come down a bit. But that's the full stroke. We've also learned how to play taps. I'll link to the videos. Taps are these very small strokes here that we play softly. When we play a rebound stroke or full stroke, obviously every time I hit the drum, I let the stick bounce back and the stick is up here again. And the next time I hit the drum, I'm going to get another loud stroke. So I use a full stroke when I'm playing a loud stroke and I want to play another loud stroke immediately afterwards. We can also learn how to play smaller strokes, but with the same idea in mind. Okay. Um, when I play taps, I'm playing little soft strokes and every time I play a tap, the stick comes back to this low height. And so every stroke is going to be soft. Soft stroke followed by soft stroke. So I can play a loud stroke, full stroke. I can play a soft stroke, tap. Okay, now the upstroke and the downstroke allow us to deal with times when we want to transition between loud strokes and soft strokes. So I'm going to demonstrate the upstroke and downstroke as part of a whole cycle. If I hold my stick above my pad like so, I'm in a neutral position. So remember when I was demonstrating the other exercises, we started off in this position with my sticks in a sort of triangular or A shape, holding them like this. This is my neutral position, relaxed shoulders, relaxed arms, and my forearms parallel to the floor. I've got my hands holding the stick from above in what's known as German grip, which is what I'm focusing on at the moment. Okay, now we'll just focus on one stick here. If I want to play a loud sound with my stick, I'm going to lift up my stick like this and strike my pad, okay? Now, as I'm lifting up my stick, I can let the stick touch the pad or kiss the pad on the way up so that in the process of raising my hand to play the loud stroke that I want to play, I'm getting a nice soft stroke on the way up. Okay, and you'll notice I'm using this whippy, wavy motion of my hand. I'm holding the stick like this in a sort of wave by bye position with my forearm parallel to the floor. I pull the stick up from the back and I let my hand follow the movement of my arm in this wavy like way. In the olden days that was called break dancing. Okay, so here's my stick. I pick it up like so and I whip it down onto the pad like this. I pull up the stick, it kisses the pad, and it stops on the way down, okay? So what this allows is I play a soft note and then a loud note, and now I'm ready for the next soft note. Soft note, loud note, soft note, loud note, soft note, loud note, okay? Now, there's another approach where you can pick up the stick from here and you're moving it rather than from the back with this wavy motion, you're turning your wrist and picking the stick up like that. So you're going from the wave by bye position to how do you do? Wave by bye, how do you do? Okay, you're, you're actually rotating your forearm to pick the stick up. Up like that, down like that. But in a way, that's another subject. I'm focusing on this motion. This is also known as a molar stroke, where we whip the stick like this. And what I'm focusing on is trying to get one smooth 
movement that I feel is circular. It's like a round movement to me. Up and down. Up, down. It's all one thing. And so it's a very, very efficient movement to learn. And again, we're learning a very sort of big version of this to really get our muscles and joints and whatever programming stuff in your brain needs to happen to get that to happen really well. Okay? So I'm doing up and down. And I'm up and down is one process. Down, up, down. Okay? And then I'm going to do that with my left hand for a bit. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. When you're trying to do this, try and get in the habit, well, anything that you're learning really, of watching what your hands are doing, really watching the movement of the stick. There's quite a lot of stuff to observe. I'm keeping my hand relaxed and you don't need to apply any thrust to the stick. You don't need to add any muscle energy uh, like that. Uh, you're not banging a nail into the wall with a hammer. You're pulling the stick up and then really letting just the weight of your arm drop the stick down. It's very relaxed. And at the end of the stroke, when the stick hits the pad, use your back fingers. I recommend using your pinky and your ring finger. Again, they can be very lightly wrapped around the stick, but they have enough strength, or you'll develop enough strength, to just prevent the stick from playing multiple strokes or bouncing away. You don't want that to happen. You want to get used to, again, with a relaxed attitude, allowing the stick to just stop a couple of centimetres from your pad or your snare drum or whatever surface you're practicing on, okay? And again, as I've said with the other videos and what I say to all my students, be very patient. Do the exercises nice and slowly and allow yourself to get used to the flow, the feeling, the balance of the stick in your hand and also being as relaxed as possible when you're practicing these exercises. And I'm, I'm aware of the fact that my shoulders get a little bit tight when I'm doing something like this and I'm concentrating also on explaining this while I'm doing it. And tension comes in. I'm not going to hold myself up as an example of the most relaxed anyone can be, but I'm always trying to be aware of how loose I am, how my muscles and my joints feel. I'm aware of the way the stick feels as it bumps up against my fingertips, okay? So, to get used to the up and down stroke, I recommend just practicing, as I showed you just now, very, very slowly, maybe at first just for a few minutes every day, and, and you get the feeling for this. Now, once you're getting used to um, the ups and downs like that, and you've focused on each hand or each limb individually, um, now you can turn it into an exercise, and this time uh, we're going to do it uh, a count of uh, eight eighth notes for two bars with each hand, and we're going to start with the downstroke so that we're going to accent the numbers, because it's kind of uh, easy to pay attention, then you can play with your metronome, and we're going to go like this. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, one, and, two, and three and four and one and two 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 and three and four and. Notice that as you transition between uh, one hand and the other, the very last stroke is going to be a tap rather than uh, an upstroke. And also that the, the, you know, the first stroke that you play is not going to be an upstroke insofar as you're going to be touching your drum or your pad, um, but you're just going to raise the hand up for that first stroke because you're starting with the accent, okay? 
The next exercise we're going to do, we're going to reintroduce the taps. We're going to play an accent on the one and three of each bar of eighth notes. We're still going to play two bars with each hand. Um, so you can count this uh, in one and two and three and four and counting out your eighth notes. Um, but it's also a really good idea to uh, verbalize the, the downs, ups and taps that are involved to really get this um, lodged into your brain well. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to just say the downs, ups and taps um, and then I'll count it as well. Okay, here we go. Down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, 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 down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, down, tap, tap, up, breathing also is good, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, 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 down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, 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 down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, 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 down, tap, up, down, Tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. For our last exercise, we're going to mix up the two previous exercises. So we're going to play one bar of eighth notes with the accent on the one and the three, and the second bar of eighth notes with each hand, we're going to play on the one, two, three, and four, and all the, the main beats on the quarter notes, okay? It looks like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and down tap tap up down tap tap up down up down up down up down tap down tap tap up down tap tap up down up down up down down tap down tap tap up, down, tap, tap, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, tap, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, tap, done. Okay, so there you go. Altogether, four exercises to help you develop your upstrokes and your downstrokes. And um, I'm intending to make some more videos describing how we can practice and improve our dynamics, how we can develop the accents uh, that we want to be able to play. I'll get into a little bit more detail about how we combine the four strokes that I described all together. The rebound or full stroke, the tap, the upstroke and the downstroke. Uh, loads of stuff you can do with it. Meanwhile, if you haven't come across this before, I hope you enjoy uh, learning about this and try practicing the exercises that I've shown you today. I'm going to include a PDF with the stuff written down and let me know how you get on. If I can answer any questions about this or if you want to suggest a topic that might be of interest. Uh, at the moment, I'm targeting people at the beginning of their drumming career uh, who I think could benefit some from some very um, basic explanations of the fundamental skills that we need as drummers. So uh, yes, like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff and uh, most importantly go away and practice.